Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to ApacheCon at Home 2020. Uh, in this first session track today, we have uh, Atri Sharma. He's an Apache Lucene committer and a PMC member uh, and a major contributor to Postgres. Uh, today, Atri will be talking about concurrent search in Lucene, uh, a rather unexplored topic, and sharing with you how to integrate that with existing Lucene-based search engines. Uh, hope you enjoy the session. Over to you, Atri. Thank you, Ansham, for the great introduction. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Atri. Uh, that's pronounced Atri, not Atri, for many uh, of my colleagues. And uh, you know, I'm talking about concurrent search in Lucene. It's not a very long presentation, but uh, I hope you guys can see my screen. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So yeah, uh, okay. Before I start. I'm hoping the screen is visible. Uh, Anshu, are you still uh, online? Uh, yeah, yes, I just rejoined to tell you your screen's not shared. Um, my screen's not shared? Okay, I'll try to do that. Yeah. Uh, can you see it now? Uh, no. Okay, give me one second. Let me figure out what's wrong. Do you to... Please yeah. join back in. No, I think I. So a button somewhere which allows you to uh, it's it's yeah. right at the bottom next to the microphone in the video. Ah, okay, I see it. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna share. Yep. Uh I'm okay. hoping you yes. guys can I'm see it now, right? Get out of here now. Yes, leave it to you. Okay, all good. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, I don't know what's going on, but yeah. Uh guys, so hopefully you can see my screen. I'm I'm at three. I work at a company called Synchronix, where we actually do threat hunting and analytics, and you know we are a major user of Solar. I'm a Lucene and Solar PMC member, as was highlighted, and I'm also a Hawk and Padlet PMC member which, in my previous slides, uh, which were actually derived from my work on Postgres. And yep, I have contributed to Postgres in the past, and one of the things that I have carried over is basically the power of statistical processing that databases do. I'm trying to bring some of that into the world of search. Uh, today, we will be basically talking about concurrent search. And I'll be going at very basics, uh, you know, as to how, what exactly are we talking about, when to use it, when not to use it, looking at some interfaces and classes that basically make this entire thing work. Uh, what are the pros and cons, and what is the future work that's planned around it, or so, some of the things that we are already in progress, or you know, things that we really want to achieve in that area, right? Uh, so some of this stuff might be very basic. Please bear with me. I'm trying to make sure that we get a comprehensive uh, treatment to the subject. Uh, so a quick refresher, as you can see on the screen, uh, I've drawn a very rough diagram of what a typical Lucene index looks like. Uh, Lucene indexes are comprised of uh, segments, which are mean indices in themselves. And if you, do, you, know, if you open the hood of a Lucene index, you'll see multiple directories there with a specific segment ID and stuff, which is basically a segment, right? Uh, not a typical search uh, basically operates in a process where you open an index searcher, right? And I'm not talking about concurrent search, a normal single thread search on a single node. We fire a query, you know, there's an index searcher, it'll go leaf context by leaf context, basically it's going segment by segment, it will, it has a global priority queue of top hits, and it will go segment one, then, you know, segment two, and then it'll go, you know, segment three, and then at the end, you know, it, it has a global priority queue, so it's basically just accumulating hits, filtering them out, it knows what hits I've looked at. If you ask for top 10 hits, you'll get the global top 10 hits, right? Uh, that's it, I mean, end of story. There's nothing more or less that happens today. Uh, the typical problem here is that, or not problem, you know, one optimization that is very obvious here is, you know, if we could actually uh, spawn multiple threads, um, across all of these segments, or at least some of these segments, take their own you know, best hits and then do a, a, another step on top where we only look at the best hits from all of these threads and then identify, okay, these are the ones which are the actual global maxima and return results back, right? 
Uh, that is something that would typically uh, speed up the entire process, especially if you have a very large number of segments and you know you have to go sequentially across all of them. The your query might take a significant amount of time. So that is the entire concept of Lucene's concurrent search, right? So you know, yeah, I've already given you this idea. Basically, it's just this, right? So you basically fire for a given query, you fire multiple number of threads, so you schedule multiple number of threads. Each of those threads has a set of segments. We'll get to that part in a bit, but each of those threads, you know, in this example, you can imagine that it has one segment each. And you when know, one thread goes to that segment, collects, okay, I want the top 10 hits, I'm going to perform a regular search as I would do. And then thread two does the same on uh, segment two, thread three does the same on segment three. Eventually these guys bring in all of their top hits. And then there's another step which we call reduce step. Uh, that is performed and then we look at all the 30 top hits, identify the best 10 out of them, and that becomes my final result set, right? Uh, so that is at a very rough, high level how concurrent search works within Lucy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, just a summarization of what I said. You know, you distribute search to all the slices. What a slice is something that we'll come to. Uh, distribute search to all slices. You know, each have has its own collector. Uh, that collector builds own priority queue just by looking at the subset of segment. Or in this case, one segment that was allowed, allowed you know, allocated to. Uh, then eventually, all the once all the characters are finished, you'll get back, you'll merge all the priority queues using a partial merge sort and identify the best, right? Uh, again, a diagrammatic representation of how it looks like with some specific details of classes. So you'll see some new terms here, such as collector manager and slice, right? So basically, a collect there's a new class or there's an interface called uh, collector manager, which is like a collector of collectors. Uh, which is introduced specifically for this uh, concurrent search operation. The collector manager does uh, typical steps such as a scatter gather, right? So if you're familiar with paradigms like map reduce, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you basically uh, send out an operation to a bunch of threads. Each of those threads perform that operation locally and then you know build a partial result set. So if you see the diagram that is projected on the screen, uh, you know there's a collector per slice and each of it has its own priority queue. And then all of those go, go back to the collector manager. A collector manager has a merge step, uh, which we technically call reduce. Now reduction does what we talked about, filters out uh, the best from all of those different priority queues, gives back the final result. So the user experience really doesn't change. You know what you expect back from your Lucene API, or you know what the, for example, if you're looking at top docs, you probably you know you'll get back the exact same results. And the, one of the invariants here, of course, is that the semantics don't change, right? So for this exact same data set and the exact same query, uh, you'll get the exact the exact same results that you would do if you just run a sequential search versus a concurrent search, right? There's no semantic difference between them, except for how that query actually internally got processed. So this is more of an internal detail or internal optimization as to how Lucene is executing this query. It is not necessarily uh, applicable or visible to the end user, uh, you know, from a perspective. Okay, you his CPU usage might go up and his queries will finish way faster, but that's about it. The interfaces, the APIs, the way the user interacts with the system doesn't really change. So now to get onto some terminologies that we have looked at at this point of time, uh, you know, a collector manager is basically a new class that we've introduced. Uh, it's a very simple concept. Collector manager is just a ma collector of collectors, right? So it has uh, two op it has two jobs. One, uh, when it is asked for, it will generate a new collector of a specific type. So each collector manager is specialized for a specific collector type that we're dealing with. So when it's asked for, it has a method which will create a new collector and they see register it somewhere or you know doesn't even need to register it. It'll just create a new collector of the given type and return it back. Uh, then at the completion of all the collectors, uh, a specific method needs to be invoked on this collector manager, giving it a collection of the collectors which have worked across all of the threads, right? So basically this is the gather step. And then the collector manager has specific information as to how to reduce the uh, information gathered from those collectors into a set of final results. So that, you know, so now beforehand in sequential search, we typically have a collector which gives back the results and you know you can if you look at lucene's internals you basically are dealing with the collector and getting results back in this scenario collector manager is responsible for, for giving those results back uh, this detail is still encapsulated somewhat uh, closely within index searcher so you know anybody outside 
that class isn't really concerned but uh, i wanted to give you a more holistic view of how this you know this entire equation works especially uh, for somebody who wants to uh, you know use this entire mechanism to paralyze their own collector types right because uh, the power of concurrent search is pretty much limited to the collector types that have their own collector managers right so if you have your own custom collector that you want to deal with uh, or you want to just paralyze you will have to you know implement this paradigm and write specific this collector manager basic interface right so you have to write the specific paradigm making sure that uh, you know how to scatter and gather uh, results between different collectors of your own type and as long as you can do that you can actually plug that right into lucene and it'll take care of all the other aspects of concurrent searching for you uh so now coming to a slice right we have talked about slice for a while what exactly is a slice um so in its most granular form or in its most uh, unoptimized form a slice is just a single segment slice is the set of segments that will be processed by a single thread during a concurrent search right uh so in as i said in a very unop unoptimized form you'd be firing a thread per segment that you're looking at again that would be very expensive that would not be worth it because there is a segment size queue and doesn't really make sense maybe some segments might be really large some might be really small and then you're treating them equally so you know you're not setting yourself up for success uh so that's why we have something in in the searcher which basically looks at the slice sizes and tries to you know distribute them in a greedy algorithm to uh, keep the median size uh, of all the um, you know threads or the median load on each thread more or less the same so typically what happen that if you have like one large segment and three small segments uh, there are high chances that the three small segments will be allocated to one thread and one large segment will go to its own thread so you know there will be two threads spawn for a query and one will be handling only the large segment the other will be handling three small segments and we'll expect or we'll you know more or less we'll estimate that they'll finish in an equal or comparative amount of time so that there's no single bottleneck in this entire equation right because if one thread takes most you know much more time than the uh, than the others then the entire point of actually parallelizing is defeated so uh the the slice uh, allocation algorithm is there it was op recently optimized to uh, basically look at uh, you know sizes of uh, the, the number of documents that a segment has and keep a cap on the number of segments that a single thread can handle you, you know there are some mathematical considerations to that uh so that's that's the entire concept of slice uh, you can actually go and change the algorithm or the way slice is allocated with an index searcher uh, although it's, i don't think it's very pluggable but you, know, you can go and override the that method index searcher and make your own slice allocation algorithm uh this is something slightly interesting and like to take a moment about it so one of the biggest uh, challenges when you know when that you face when you start parallelizing things is basically a uh, resource contention right so if you are for example if you have a bunch of queries and each of those queries starts firing n number of threads uh then it there are chances that you might actually end up just looking at too much of uh, you know query contention or thread contention and you really no, don't leave any cpu headroom for any other process that wants to do something or maybe just for indexing right uh that contention might just grow and there might be uh, noisy neighbor problems that start occurring so slice executor uh, is a mechanism for controlling that behavior uh, first off it is not an implementation of java executor it's just named uh, you know it, it, they are homonomically named but they don't have any relation with each other uh slice executor is basically a way in which you can define uh, how a query should be running its threads in real time so this is not a static thing it's actually done in real time right so uh, for example you might actually say that hey at any you know at any point of time don't run more than n number of threads for a given query right um that is one way or maybe at any point of time uh i don't want my overall cpu usage to go more than x percentage or the total number of threads that are fired across one executor should not no more the be more than the number of cores that i have any any real time feedback or any real time data that you would like to push into the actual execution of your query specifically around aligning how many threads single point of time right so the slice time would have 
uh, ha happened earlier. You know, uh, index watcher would have uh, allocated slices for your segment. Threads are going to fight for a query, but doing the actual execution, you can actually look at system statistics and feed them back into search and say, okay, now you know system is too loaded. Don't execute more than three threads at a time. So then. Uh, you know, the index searcher instance will actually stagger threads or it'll, you know, uh, bash threads and execute them, make sure that it does not exceed the limits that are set, set by the slice executor. So basically, a slice executor is a way to set your uh, thread execution strategy so that you can control the actual behavior of a query when it's going multi-threaded. And this is basically put into place to ensure that in, um, you know, in high load or in skewed scenarios, uh, one query does not overtake the entire or maximum amount of CPU usage because it had too many threads or you know, it was just a very heavy query. So we're using this likes executor interface, you can actually define the uh, execution strategy that you, you want your queries to be used. And this is real time. So this won't be a static operation that will actually take system statistics into account. Uh, yeah, so now coming to some specifics of you know, how do we use whatever we have seen till now. If you look at the index searcher class, and again, I'll be going to some code specifics here. Uh, if you look at the index searcher class uh, and you know you see, you see how to create one, you'll see two new uh, constructor methods available there. One is called the, uh, you know, one has only the index reader context and the executor instance. So basically the way to uh, tell Lucene that you want to do concurrent search is to pass in a Java executor class to index searcher. So that is an implicit agreement to uh, you know to uh, basically be using concurrent so you, you're basically signaling to lucene that hey i want to use concurrent search whenever applicable it might actually happen that you know your queries are so light they're only looking at uh, so lit, you know so small segments or uh, the density of segments are not that much that eventually lucene will decide that it only requires one thread for most of the queries but you're basically allowing lucene to use concurrent search if it's applicable if it were uh, expected to help your the latency of your query uh, in the first thing, your constructor, if you use that, you're basically telling Lucene to use the default size executor. Uh, this default size executor is very simple. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the default model says that, you know, the executor that you have passed in, the Java executor, uh, at any point, no more than 1.5 times of the maximum size uh, threads are scheduled in the executor, right? So you're not going to schedule like five times the number of the size of the executor threads, because that doesn't make sense. So that's a default behavior. And if you're not passing in your own custom flex executor, that is a behavior that you get. Uh, the other uh, uh, constructor is even more fine grained. So you can pass in your own Java executor and you can pass in your own slice executor uh, implementation. In this scenario, your own implementation of the slice executor uh, will override the default version. And uh, in that, you know, you are you basically master of your destiny. So the way for each query execution, your slice executor will be invoked. And then you can basically decide how you want to run those threads. You can build your own priority model. You can do whatever you would want. And Lucene will basically uh, follow the execution strategy set by your slice executor uh, to the last bit. And that is the amount of control that you can have on how your queries get executed. Uh, so, as I said, so that is basically how you, uh, you know, indicate to Lucene that you want to use concurrency. Uh, if you want to, as a, I mentioned this before, if you actually want to use uh, concurrency for your custom collectors, then you have to implement the collector manager interface, uh, which basically has two methods. So it's in a new collector, which is used during the uh, query spanning phase, you know, when we actually uh, firing new uh, threads for different phases of the query or different slices of the query. And then there's a reduce operation, which is basically a gather step or the, you know, if you map it, map reduce, it is a reduce step where you give it all the collectors that have been run for a specific query and expect the reduce method to turn that partial set of results into a final comprehensible result that can be given back to the end user. Again, these are very specific to uh, the specific collector that you're dealing with. So you know, all of your logic should be encapsulated within your own custom collector manager interface uh, implementation, I'm sorry. Uh, now coming to, you know, well, I mean, this sounds great, right? But does that mean that we should be using concurrent search all the time? Oh, well, not necessarily, because one thing we have to realize is that this does add additional computational cost uh, to the overall search uh, runtime. Because, you know, for example, if you asked uh, Lucene for n hits, 
and Lucene decides, and you said, okay, go and use concurrence uh, search. Then basically Lucene decides that you want maybe let's say M threads. And then the total number of hits that you're actually collecting is N into M, right? Because now each uh, collector, each slice is actually looking at N hits, right? If it can, if it does not even have N documents, then this a different story. But basically, you know, the N slice, the each slice will generate N documents. And their M of those threads, M of those slices. So you're basically collecting N into M documents. On top of it, then you have an additional, uh, you know, partial merge sort step or partial merge set, uh, where you're basically now going through all those priority queues, merging them, and building the final result, which will be given back to the user. And then there's, you know, there's always, always coordination because I said, if for some reason one thread is much slower than the others, then that thread basically defines your latency, right? So you actually are paying the cost of uh, the additional computation without any significant gains because you know one thread really went slow or you, you have a bad this or something like that so uh you no know, concurrent search is not perfect it does have its own computation overhead and they can get amplified uh if you have too much of data right so if your queries are so expensive that they actually you know you can see the amount of data that you're looking at greatly explodes then you need to be a bit careful uh, so when to actually be using concurrent search? Uh, concurrent search is pretty useful uh, when you know you have available CPU resources. Uh, you know you're not basically hitting the red line QPS of your existing system, uh, but your queries that are getting fired are long pull queries, right? They are expensive queries. They are looking at large amount of data. They are spending significant amount of time just scanning data, right? Uh, they're critical queries, or they might just be some sort of uh, you know, some sort of reporting that you're running depends. Uh, so if you have the available computational power and you want to go that extra step to make sure that if your long pull running, running queries are actually your long pull queries are getting faster at the trade off of a higher uh, resource usage, then you should be using concurrent search, right? And that is becoming a very common use case these days because uh, people are going beyond the typical search application when using the scene. So uh, in those sort of scenarios, when you have heavy queries and you have uh, resource compute, you know, resource capacity to spare, you can actually use concurrent search to greatly reduce down the overall latency of your long pole queries, right? Uh, and that actually also leads to the other aspect of where not to use concurrent search. Uh, it's basically when you are already red line, right? you have a very high QPS scenario where your queries per second is extremely high and you're also already bordering on the high watermark or the alert watermark for your uh, resource capacity or your computational capacity. So you should not be using uh, you know, concurrent search there because it will only add to the pain. Uh, the other aspect is if you have very light queries, right? Um, you really don't want multi-threading or you don't need multi-threading because you, know, you might have a, a large number of segments, but those segments are so small that it doesn't really matter. Although you know, Lucene slice planning should take care of this, but in those scenarios, you might wa not want to use uh, concurrent search because it might actually do more harm than good. As I said, Lucene's size planning should ideally take care of this. And same for small data set. If you have low number of segments, it doesn't really make sense to be using concurrent search. But for the last two options, I think Lucene can take care of it. The biggest takeaway here, I would say, is that if you're serving a very high transaction load, uh, then this probably won't make sense, right? If you have too many queries coming at the same time and most of those queries are short-lived, um, and you're already running high on resources, then adding more computational expense to each query might not be a re really good idea. So you might want to consider which scenario you want to use concurrent search for. And the converse is also true, right? If you have the available capacity, you can actually just, and you want to make your slow queries faster or your large, you know, long run queries faster, you can just use concurrent search and you'll see a significant improvement in the overall latency that you see. Uh, so that, you know, what till what, uh, this point, what you've talked about is a basic model of concurrent search uh, that is not really optimized uh, for a lot of scenarios. For example, you know, everybody's collecting their own hits. They're not coordinating between each other. Uh, there is no, you know, they're not really using the caller thread for anything. So there have been optimizations. There are different optimizations going on right now. I might have actually missed a couple uh, in the recent times. But um, for example, if you only, you know, uh, if you only want to look at n number of documents uh, globally, right? If you, you can actually tell you seem to not look at more than n number of documents. In that scenario, earlier concurrent search actually used to look at n documents per slice, but now it's a global counter where 
you'll only look at N documents globally. So it really doesn't matter if you know, you're using N threads, the limit that you've put for the visibility of documents will still be respected uh, comprehensively and across all threads. Uh, then the other optimization, which actually was pretty, uh, excuse me, helpful in uh, the nightly benchmarks that we run, was basically publishing the worst of the best, right? So basically uh, each collector in the, you know, each uh, slice basically publishes the uh, score of the worst item in his priority queue. So, you know, we, as you know, right, when uh, a collector is going over its uh, data, it basically uh, decides at every point which, you know, if a document is worth adding to the priority queue of its collection or not, or the priority queue it is maintaining, whether the new document should be added to it or not, replacing some other document. So uh, one optimization that has been done is basically every collector publishes the worst, uh, the score of the worst document that is currently in its priority queue. And then the other threads uh, compare that with their local worst, right? So it's like a local minima versus global minima. They take the maximum of it and actually use that to be uh, you know, filtering documents in their local search. So what might happen is that as a thread, I have you know, my worst seen document has a score of X and globally the worst seen score document, you know, worst seen document has a score of let's say X plus two or something or not two, but a score higher than X. So basically what I mean is that my document will never make it to uh, this, you know, basically never make it to the top 10 elite or, you know, the final result set because there are only already 10 documents that are better than this guy, right? So I can start filtering those documents. I can start pruning documents right from the get go so that I'm not looking at unnecessary documents. I'm not taking them for final processing when I don't know that they have no chance of making it to the final result set. Uh, then another optimization that went in was basically using the caller thread for uh, you executing one of the uh, you know one of these uh, slices as well. Some of the optimization that I haven't really mentioned here are also around using a shared priority queue which we explored, or basically uh, you know making sure that if we because using a shared priority queue has its own uh, concurrency cost. So we are I think there have been optimization done recently in that area, and there are more that have to be explored just to make sure that. Uh, the cost of these n into m collections is reduced or if you can reduce the number of uh, documents that we actually looking at in a concurrent search if you can reduce that footprint that will be really helpful and increase the scope of applicability of uh, concurrent search other improvement that actually went in uh, but you know was got reverted because of uh, some corner case test failures that i'm yet to look at is basically using the same executor to actually uh, you know, cache concurrently. So basically make LRU caching concurrent using the same executor. Uh, so I'm actually reviving that discussion. And uh, one very interesting item that I haven't put up here because it's not gone in yet. It's under a lot of contention that, you know, we are doing on the community is basically a scenario where, uh, you know, if you actually are, actually, let me see if I have that. Yeah, so, you know, here. So, you know, a scenario where, uh, Imagine if you have merged all of your indices into one large, um, all of your segments into one large segment, right? Uh, that happens. People do that for query performance or for freezing or you know for long-term storage stuff like that. And now in that scenario, even if your segment is very large, uh, in the current concurrent search implementation, uh, you cannot benefit from multi-threading because uh, you know you still be have it's still a single segment. You still have one thread reading through it. It doesn't really matter if the segment is really large. We don't have the ability to uh, split a single segment and actually divide doc ID ranges among multiple threads, uh, which is one of the optimizations that uh, you know that has been pursued or that has been discussed. And I think uh, that will help uh, other scenarios that are not yet being targeted by concurrent search. So that is one uh, potential optimization that sh will hopefully make it way into Lucene sometime or in some other form. But uh, yeah, that has been pursued. And then again, there are you know, more slice executing implementations, right? Or the model is pretty simplis uh, simplistic. Maybe we want to use more of uh, system stats or resource stats and more of live monitoring to actually control how threads are being executed for the existing executing queries, which are actually using concurrency. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that is mostly about uh, Lucene's concurrent search. Uh, right now, you know, neither, neither of the popular uh, uh, search engines built on top of Lucene actually expose this feature. Uh, Solar has uh, an open item for this, uh, which is being targeted for 9.0. Uh, there's a Jira open 
please take a look at it. There's also a PR open for it, which needs to be updated. But hopefully, 9.0 release of Solar will have uh, usage of collective managers and allow uh, you know, multi threaded searching for a single node as well. Um, that should hopefully help for large analytical queries. But uh, that item is being pursued, and uh, you know, fingers crossed that will land pretty, uh, pretty soon as well. So yeah, I think uh, that was a marathon, and that was all I wanted to share today. Uh, so thank you for being patient, audience. I, I'm not sure if you know if there are any questions that I can help answer anything that uh, it was not obvious, and I can help clarify. Okay, so I see a bunch of questions. I'll start answering them. Uh, yeah, so as Shyam mentioned, you know, uh, Mike McCandless actually brought me to you know, the world of Luzine and he actually told me about content search first. So yeah, a lot of things that I have uh, done and have been done recently are motivated by him. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, so as uh, Rahul asked, is Fessering currently multi-threaded? No, it is not, as David already answered. Thank you, David. But uh, it can be made multi-threaded uh, if we put in the right semantics. Uh, to answer Push's question, um, you know, yes, there are, uh, you know, performance tests done. And you can actually look at them if you look at the nightly benchmarks that we have run. Uh, I think Mike also published some numbers and I also have them so I can connect with you offline and share. But if you look at the blog post that was referred or if you look at the nightly benchmarks that uh, we run, you should be able to see what kind of performance changes we have seen. Yeah, if I had the same question. Uh, I think uh, there are public available numbers that I don't have right now, but I can go offline and share with you. No. Uh, parallel indexing is, uh, you know, it is doable, uh, but I don't think this approach actually helps there because this is very specific to search. And all the semantics that we have actually uh, put in here are, you know, just related to the search part of the world. So yes, of course, I mean, theoretically it is possible, but I don't think we have explored that yet or anything or, or much of what has been done for concurrent search can be salvaged for that implementation. So that would be a separate effort in itself. Oh, okay, I probably misunderstood your question. <laughs> then I'm sorry. Yeah, if, if you went, meant only a single node indexing in Lucene, yes, that's already there. Okay, I probably you know was thinking of something very different. Sorry about that. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Sham. So we have quite some time. We can actually you know hang back here, or I can I'll be present around in multiple rooms if you want to chat about it. Or uh, I'm always available for any questions that I can help answer. Early termination, uh, yeah. So it's basically, if you're talking about the number of documents that you know you can limit, yes, that's something that we do support. Uh, that's a great question, Sham. Right now, we don't capture those metrics uh, per se, but uh, you know, it, it would be good to publish those numbers in some aggregated form. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. We should definitely discuss it offline. But right now, I don't think we have any clear way of uh, capturing those numbers and actually making them available, making them available to any API. Uh, 